last minute to pick out your Halloween costume? Are you totally out of ideas? So, if you waited to the last minute to pick out your Halloween costume, or you have no ideas, or, like me, you have no money, this is probably like the cheapest and most effective thing you can do, honestly. So when I was like 17 or whatever, like before Instagram was a thing, I used to do like creative self-portraits all the time. And I used to try to explore and experiment with like makeup photography stuff. It was nowhere near the level that these kids are doing nowadays, but I used to do that a lot. So when I was about 17, I wanted to do this gross like heart torn out of my chest thing for Valentine's Day. And I don't know how I thought of it. I really don't. But I was like, what if I take toilet paper and glue it to my chest and then paint it and that'll look like this, it'll look like skin and being ripped open or whatever. And I actually think this is a pretty well-known thing that people do, but back then I didn't. Social media was like really, I mean, it was just like basically Facebook with your friends and that was it. Social media was not exploded yet. So I just did it and it looked pretty good for a little teenager, so I'll show you. This is what I did. So you can see it's just like a gash looking thing, right? This Halloween, I was trying to think of what looks to do. And I was like, what do I have to offer? Like what special thing do I have to offer? And I remembered this trick that I thought of and that I've used over the years. And even though you can probably find like thousands of tutorials on how to do it, you can do the wound and a beauty makeup and be like a cute zombie or you can just go full nasty, which I think that's what I'm gonna do. We'll see how I feel. Toilet paper, liquid latex, and your regular makeup. And you can use, you know, like one of these Halloween base palette things. And you know, it's not that great, but it, it gets the job done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rub down the area that's gonna have the toilet paper on it with a cotton ball and alcohol just to make sure it sticks. So I'm just gonna start applying this liquid latex kind of everywhere. I'm gonna do the torn out throat thing again and then put some up on my face as well. Oh God. <laughs> I just spilled that everywhere. It's very runny. I was not expecting that. <laughs> oh God, it stinks. So now I'm just going to start laying it down. And it's kind of a process, so I just kind of stick it down, put more latex over it to saturate it, and you can kind of crumple it up too, which is, which actually will add to like the ripped folded skin thing. Just work with it, see what looks good, you know? So make sure you especially go over the edges well. That way it'll, it won't look like you've got a square of toilet paper on you. It helps if you keep the edges jagged or non-linear, non right? So it's like right here, I have a straight line. I just, yeah, boom. Honestly, as long as it's nasty and bloody, it's gonna look cool, so. So you know what, now that I've gotten like one layer down, maybe I'll try to build up some like claw looking marks and see if that works out. So I'll move this piece a little to get it going. Look, see, that could be a part of the, the edge of the recess of a claw mark. Can you even see this? I hope you can see this. You can pinch it into the right shape you want to once it's soaked in latex. Oh yes. Oh yes. So I'm going to just keep building up these claw mark lines. And something else that I'm doing that I didn't mention. So you see this, you know like this tendon thing in your neck that sticks out? Um, or just any part of your neck that naturally is raised. Put the raised marks on those areas 
and let the divots, like the dips in your anatomy, remain the deep points of your wound. So, if you can, because that way, the natural depth of your own anatomy will enhance the, the depth of the wound you're making. Because you're going to try to make the illusion of like a deep hole, you know, so you need, you gotta use what you can get, right? Watch this one not turn out right now that I'm trying to like teach it to somebody. But like the one that I did a couple years ago when I just like was in my friend's bathroom throwing toilet paper on myself with Elmer's glue. Watch that one be better than this one. And at some point, if you get a thick enough layer of latex, you can start ripping it or cutting it. And that will give you extra dimensions. Now I'm just peeling or tearing to the, the layer of latex I put on my face. Oh. Ugh. If you want to know how much invisible hair you have on your face, do this. God, that hurts. Just peel in more holes. Ow! Gotta be real careful though. I'm gonna just scratch my skin up real bad. So, I guess it'll just add to the zombie effect. I am not putting this in my eyebrows, okay? Because, ow. Don't put it in your eye either. So while I'm doing this, this is obviously going to be my lighthearted Halloween video. Lest we forget that spooky fun is still fun. And actually before it's totally dry, it's best to start rubbing it and getting these nasty, like, things. I don't know what they're called. Pock marks? Rot marks? What is zombie acne called? Skin? <laughs> so now I'm just going over it all with my foundation. And if you have a foundation that makes your skin look terrible and you don't really like using it for that reason, bust it all right now. Because that's what I'm doing and terrible skin is, <laughs> you know, Key here. Key. Also, this is good for you, those of you who don't want to have, who are going to a party, and don't want to have to like keep touching up your makeup. Just let it rot, let it decay. If you have oily skin, just let it fly. You know. Okay, now I'm gonna use a lighter foundation on my regular skin because you know, make me look more dead. You actually don't really have to go under the eyes very much. Definitely don't have to conceal under there. Or your, uh, you don't have to base your eyelids either. Basically, it's the lazy girl's Halloween costume. Yeah. Pimples? Don't conceal them. So now that we look colorless, gotta add back in some color, right? That's some dead color. So I'm just gonna use this because this is fast and cheap and slimy. I'm gonna kind of like contour with this shade and not worry if it gets kind of out of control because this black will blend it in and then you'll see what happens. Actually, I lied. I'm not really contouring. I'm just kind of like Shading my face. I'm shading a little bit inside these rips in the skin. So anywhere you have like a really deep recess in your appliance, just stab some black in it. Yeah, doesn't have to be perfect. You can tell I'm just slapping this on. Now I'm gonna go back over in a couple spots 
with foundation to kind of bury some of that black makeup, make it look a little more blue shaded actually. See if you can tell like when I go over the black a little bit it looks more blue. So now I'm adding some red. So Okay, and now that you've gotten everything all painted, try taking some warm brown, like maybe like this or like this rusty color, and see if I can deaden this too pink stuff. If any of you out there are in the medical field, you know who you are. Don't tell me if this is like horribly inaccurate or whatever. Come on guys, I made this out of toilet paper. Also, I didn't fancy looking up pics of dead bodies, mauled bodies, you know, so we're just letting our imagination do the talking. But actually, if you do want to tell me what I can do to make this more realistic, for real, go for it, because I'm forever a student. Yes, I think that's helping immensely, right? This looks so much more rusty. We're going to go in with black eyeshadow, deepen the deep, deepest areas. Try to keep the darkest points like right next to the ridges as if we're casting a deeper shadow than it looks like. Might as well contour the eyes while we're at it. Mixture of um, charcoal gray and rust. Like a rusty brown. And it can be messy, like I said, unblended. Enhance your under eye bags. Sink those eyes. And in school. Adding just even just the tiniest bit of shading at the corners of the mouth makes you look so sickly. It's great. And it works miracles. Let's see. Am I cute yet? Also, you don't have to do your eyebrows. Like, this is the best look. This is like the best everyday look. Like, no joke. I'm gonna put red liner, like super bright, like toxic waste bright red in my waterline. Don't forget the ears. So, I'm adding some red under the eyes. Now what we do is we just add blood. Oh my god, if I run out of this and I don't have enough, ugh, fight myself. There you go. 
Yes. <laughs> can kind of dabble it a little bit. Oh, this stuff will dry down as well. But it will stain your clothes and I think your skin. So know that. Since the blood is dried down to be pretty matte, we're going to take clear lip gloss. We're just gonna coat all the areas that had blood with clear gloss so that they remain wet looking. And this and this stuff is going to run, but adding gloss gives color more depth. See, when I add that, it just automatically looks more real, if you can tell. Et voila! Fresh mauling! Now it's time for the creepy outro. This is definitely more me than my usual videos, that's for sure. Got one more Halloween video coming up, and that one's also going to be a little gross, but it's going to be going back a little bit to the pretty as well, sort of. So, see you then, and have a spooky, brains-filled Halloween. Like, is anyone else sick of all the glam stuff? Like, honestly, I am. So this is very liberating. I've had a rough day. Honestly, stop the presses. This is my favorite one. It's, it was meant to be just an easy, quick little one, but like, of course, the only one I do with blood is my favorite one. So now yeah, I really gotta go this time because like, I need to take 10,000 Snapchat pictures of this. <laughs>